She is a woman in search of redemption. Nearly 11 years after filling a bathtub at her Houston area home and methodically drowning her five children. She's a very spiritual uh, person, um, uh, reads the Bible constantly. For more than five years, Andrea Yates has been locked up inside a Texas mental hospital. But now her doctors say she's made such progress that they'd like to grant her request to attend church outside the facility once a week. Her defense lawyer, George Parnum, says a congregation has agreed to let her come. <laughs> Long before that awful day in 2001, Andrea appeared to be a healthy, happy mother. Come on. She homeschooled her children. But in the years leading up to the murders, Andrea became delusional. With each birth, it got worse. She hardly made sense when talking with a psychologist before her trial. The cartoon characters were talking to us. The cartoon saying, characters? Saying, hey, kids, stop eating so much candy. Before the murders, Andrea had been hospitalized four times, attempted suicide twice, and was on and off antipsychotic medications. Her defense team claimed she suffered from severe postpartum depression. She thought she was a bad mother and that her children were doomed to spend eternity in hell. The only way to save them, she thought, was to kill them. What loving mother would want their children to burn in hell? On June 20th, 2001, Andrea waited for her husband, Rusty Yates, to leave for work, then filled the bathtub, holding each child one by one under the water. The oldest, Noah, was seven. The youngest, Mary, just six months. When she was done, she calmly called 911. Are you having a disturbance? Are you ill or what? Uh, yes, I'm ill. You need an ambulance? No, I need a police officer. Yeah, I've sent an ambulance. Andrea later confessed. After you drew the bathwater, what was your intent? What were you about to do? And the children. Bring the jury in, please. At her 2002 trial, she was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to life in prison. But after it was discovered a key prosecution witness had lied on the stand, Andrea got a new trial. At her 2006 retrial, a jury found her not guilty by reason of insanity. She and Rusty divorced in 2005. As part of her divorce settlement, Andrea Yates was given permission to be buried next to her children here at this cemetery outside Houston. In all these years, she's never been able to visit their graves. And even if she is allowed out to attend church, she still won't be able to come here. But her attorney told me that he comes to visit the gravesite every year on the children's birthdays because their mother can't. Her attorney says Andrea has been treated for depression and still takes medication for her bipolar disorder. It will be up to a judge to decide if she's well enough to attend church. I know you were her defense lawyer and you certainly are an advocate for her, but this is a woman who drowned five of her children. I understand I mean, Why on earth should she be allowed to do anything, let alone attend church? It's my belief is that if you're not mentally culpable, then you're not responsible criminally for those acts. Suzanne O'Malley covered the trials and wrote a book about the murders. She says some in the community still fear Andrea is dangerous. I think that her going to church for two hours on Sunday as long as the congregation welcomes her would be an acceptable thing. I think the chances are very slim that anything would happen um, in those two hours. But Andrea has a dark history with religion. Her defense team claimed her delusions got worse after the couple befriended a traveling preacher named Michael Warnecki. He convinced them to give away their possessions and move their children into a 340 square foot bus. Are you at all concerned that she might be negatively influenced by the scripture sitting in church again? No, because Andrea was ill at the time that these, the parameters of her delusion, which happened to be the images that, that Warnicke, uh and his group would foist upon her ill mind. Um, she's not that way now. George Parnum says all she wants is a stable church where God and Christianity can have a role in her life. I'm just curious, does she feel any guilt? She mourns 
and she feels a great deal of remorse, uh, and perhaps she can equate that into guilt. Try as she may, all the prayers in the world may not be enough to assuage the guilt of such a horrific crime. Randy Kay, CNN, Houston.